Hey there, welcome to Charger Games. My name is Raja and this is just a random video that I wanted to make for a lot of days. So in this video we're going to learn about time.delta time which confuses a lot. So let's get started. So first of all I have just in this scene I have just created a simple quad and I have attached a simple script to it. So what this script does is in the update function I have done transform the translate which just moves this key, move this uh, quad or move whatever the script is attached to by this amount. So in the x axis it will move it by speed. This is a variable that I have created here and in the y axis it will not move. In the z axis it will not move. So what this function does is it will move by this speed that is by this amount of units uh, to this game object. So let's see uh, what happens. So if I run this game, this kid moves too fast. If I run this game again, you can see it moves too fast. And again, if we just comment it out and multiply it with something called time.delta time, if I multiply this speed with this time.delta time, magically something else happens. So this time, if I run this game, as you can see, this has a good behavior. This is moving 5 units per second. So what does thing happen and why we use this thing called time to delta time? We'll learn all about these things in this video. So when you finish this video, this concept will get completely clear. So let's get started. So first of all, what if we don't use time to delta time and just use this thing? Okay. So as you guys know, we have we write most of these codes in the update method okay in this update function so this update function is part of this mono behavior we are inheriting it from the mono behavior that's why we can use it so what unity does it calls this update method in each and every frame okay so in every frame this update method gets called so now the problem is uh, now the problem with this approach is that suppose you have a computer which is uh, pretty fast so you're getting 60 fps so what 60 fps mean is you are getting uh, 60 frames 60 frames are rendered 60 frames are rendered per seconds okay so in your computer you get 60 fps that is why you are getting 60 frames per second that means you're update method gets called 60 times in every second since update is called every frame so you get 60 frames per second so that is why the update method in your computer gets called 60 times suppose you have a friend who has a pretty slow computer so he gets only 30 fps for a game so in his case this update method gets called only 30 times per second now if you want to move your object by this amount that is if you want your speed to be 5 and if you want your object to move only by 5 units per frame uh, that means if you want it to move only 5 units in the update method since update gets called since in your computer update gets called 60 times so that means after one second in one second it gets called 60 times so after one second your player will move 60 times 5 oops 60 times 5 that is 300 units okay and your in your friend's computer since he gets only 30 fps that means his update method gets called only 30 times per second so after end of one second you will his player will move 150 units so as you can see if we depend on this frame rate to move our player or to play our game or to build our game what will happen is in a faster computer we will get faster our player will move faster and in a slower computer our player will move slower so that's just a dumb thing you know because uh, if I have a slow computer and, and I get a bad experience from a game that is if the claim runs slow that means if the player runs slow or jumps slow that's not what you want we want to develop a universal experience which will be same for each and every one in the world no matter whatever computer he has okay so that is where the concept of time to delta time came so what is time to delta time? 
time dot delta time this delta time is a static variable inside this time class and what this does is inside this delta time we store the uh, amount of time the amount of time took to render the last frame so basically we say inside delta time we store how much time it took to render the last frame okay so if in your computer if you are getting 60 fps if you are getting 60 frames per second that means in one second uh, okay so that means for 60 frames gets called in one second okay so in your case 60 frames get called in one seconds so one frame gets called one by 60 seconds so if i do this calculation in calculator you will see that one by 60 equals 0 0.016 so that means in your computer the last frame gets rendered in 0 0.016 seconds okay so that means the time dot delta times value is 0 0.016 seconds for that frame and if you're getting 30 frames per second so that means for uh, for 30 frames it takes one seconds so for one frame it takes 1 by 30 seconds so if I do the calculation again 1 by 30 that is 0 0.033 0 0.033 so <coughs> excuse me for that so for 30 frames per second you were uh, in one second or for one frame gets rendered in 0 0.33 seconds so that means the value of time dot delta time here is 0 0.033 so if you have a basic understanding of operating systems you know that Every OS runs a lot of processes at the same time. As an example, in my computer, currently the Unity is open, and the Notepad is open. If I open the Google Chrome for internet, so all these processes will run one by one by one, and the operating system will provide limited resources to each and everything. So when you are just doing Unity, uh, just playing your game you may get 60 fps but when you are play your playing your game and along with that you were doing suppose other tasks you may not get 60 fps so that is why in your computer also the frame rate will vary so that is why the value of time to delta time will not be the same in each and every frame suppose in one frame suppose in in a point of time you get 60 fps so in that point of time your time to delta time will be 0 0.016 okay and in another point of time you may get 30 fps and in that point of time the value of your time to delta time will be 0 0.033 i hope you were clear uh, since this clear till this point next we're going to learn how this thing really works okay so make sure if you don't understood this thing make sure to rewatch this thing because this thing is very important if you don't understand is this thing you will not understand what i'm going to try uh, i'm going to tell you next so next we're going to learn as you can see here we are having speed and if we multiply it with time to delta time what really happens so suppose i want my player to move five units per seconds so as I've said, instead of depending on frame, we want our player to move 5 units per second. Since second is universal, so we will get same thing everywhere. So if I want to move it 5 units per second, then I cannot make it move 5 units per frame. Because in one second, I get 30 frames. So that is why for one frame, we have to move it such an amount so that at last, at the end of one second it moves five units okay so we have to calculate how much we have to move our player in each and every frame so that after the end of one second it moves five units okay so let us calculate that so if we are getting 30 fps that means if we are getting 0 0.033 so what will happen is we are multiplying our 
amount of speed by 10 to delta time. So that means we are multiplying 5 by 0 0.033. Remember, this is speed times time to delta time. Let me write it here. So, uh, oops. so what is going on here is that we are multiplying speed by 10 to the time and we are doing the same thing here so in each and every frame since update is called each and every frame so in each and every frame we are multiplying speed let me comment it out here so in each and every frame we are multiplying speed by time the delta time so the same way here we are multiplying 5 that is speed by the delta time that we are getting in the last frame so what this will say is that if we multiply this, then the result will tell us how much we are moving our object per frame. Okay? So if we multiply 5 by 5 times 0 0.033 equals 0 0.165. So this is the amount by which we are moving our object by which are moving our game object per frame okay so if we're getting if our time to the time is 0 0.033 that means if we are getting 30 fps then we want our player to move by this amount per frame since we get 30 frames per second so that means if we want our player to move only by this amount per frame so after one second we get 30 frames so after the end of 30 frames we move our player by this times 30 that is 4.95 that is almost 5 okay since I have not taken all the decimal points in the previous calculations that is why we're getting 4.95 otherwise we would get complete 5 okay so as you can see if we move our player by this amount of time and if we, if we multiply 5 by delta time that we are getting then after the end of one second or after the end of 30 frames we are getting five so after one second so which we actually wanted we wanted our player to move five units per second so we have done that using 10 to the time the same thing applies if we get 60 frames per second if we get 60 frames per second so that means for one frame it takes 0 0.016 seconds so that means Again, if we multiply this by delta time, so in that case, if you're getting 60 frames per second, so then our delta time is 0 0.016. So we multiply 5 by 0 0.016. So we get 5 times 0 0.016. So we get 0 0.08. Have I done it right? Okay. Okay. So we are getting this amount of time. So each and every frame. So in each and every frame, I think I have messed something up. Or okay. So after each and every frame, we want our player to move by this amount if we are getting 60 FPS. So at the end of 60 frames, that is at the end of one second, we are moving our player by 4.8. That is almost 5. Since I am not taking, I'm not considering all the calculations that we are getting. That is why we are getting 4.8. Otherwise, we would have got 5. Okay. So after. Uh, so after one second or after 60 frames, we almost get five. So now you can see that we wanted our player to move five seconds per second. And now whatever be the speed of the CPU. So if we get 60 FPS or if we get 30 FPS, it doesn't really matter. Always our player moves the same amount of time, five units per second in any computer in the world you run. So that is the importance of time to the time. Okay. So I tried to explain it to you guys from the beginning and I want to I try to explain to you guys as simple as possible but I know we just confused a lot and probably I am not able to uh, make you all of you guys understand what I'm trying to say but I just tried so if you have any confusions make sure to ask me questions in the comments below and uh, make sure to rewatch the video if you don't get it because uh, if you rewatch the video maybe your concepts will get clear okay 
So I hope you guys at least got the concept of why we need time to do the time and hope you enjoyed this video at last. <laughs> okay, so thank you, thank you very, very much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned about this thing. I know this thing is pretty confusing, but if you practice it and if you just do it in your own hands and think about it a little bit, you will get the concept. So thank you very much and have a great day. Make sure to subscribe and like this video and share if you want and I'll see you in another video so see you in the next video thanks